truth. Lively discussions about business, marketing, and personal development for small business owners. No hype, just help. Thursday. It's a book Thursday. Thursday. We're going to talk about books that I like because <laughs> it's Thursday. <laughs> Special edition. Special For those edition. of you watching on the replay, it won't matter. But instead of our usual two o'clock slot, it's six o'clock Eastern, five o'clock Central. We're shaking things up. It doesn't really matter for most of you. And tomorrow it's going to be interesting too. And then Monday will be interesting too because we are uh, testing things out. Things are happening during the day that, you know, we can't tell you about. Uh, gotta kill you. And um... well, we can tell you about this book. Can't or I should book. say, Ifat can tell you about this book because this one is an Ifat only read. I never even My heard favorite. of it until she told me about it. So uh, before I tell you about this book, I have two things to tell you. One, two things. Two things. Remember, our giveaway tomorrow is happening and you can get it with commenting. All you have to do is comment, engage, tell us how you feel. Did you read the book? Did you not read the book? Do you like what I'm about to share with you? Just comment and participate and let us know. And then your name will be added to the wheel of names and tomorrow whether we're gonna you have like a very dramatic not. turn of events <laughs> what'd you say i said whether you like it or not your name goes on the wheel and you can come on here right here right now be the naked truth.com there's a button right below the video uh i've been told by some really awesome people that it sucks to watch us hey grant competition yes it sucks to watch us on facebook some people told me because of the way facebook shows the comments and the video and it's really hard to watch so michael daniels who said that hop on here you can watch it on our site you don't have to deal with facebook or twitter or linkedin or youtube just come on here be part There's of our conversation many choices of how to consume us <laughs> just consume us just consume us that's just all we care as about as you consume us so let's yeah. talk about this book, shall we? So how old is this book? How old is this book? It's a good question. It's pretty old. It looks old, doesn't it? It does look kind of old. And that's why I say it's like, how have I made I've never heard of this book all this time? And you're like raving about it. And I'm like, I never even heard of that book. Dude, it is. There's a lot of books out there. Have you but... heard about Jonathan Livingstone Seagull? Nope. Okay, you want to know how old this book is? <laughs> yeah. Right. <laughs> 1977. I was three years old. I'm I was not three say years how old. old I was. <laughs> that tells you right there. All right. The so if yeah. I'm into the old stuff, that's fine. She's yeah. an oldie but a goodie. Sometimes they stand the test of time, right? They're fantastic. And I gotta show you. So um, it's really beautiful. So have you heard about uh, Richard Bach, Jonathan Livingstone Siegel? Have you heard about that book? No, no, that's what you just asked me a minute ago, that my answer hasn't changed. No, the answer is no. <laughs> the answer is still no. You can ask me a third time, still going to say no. I wasn't listening to you while I was looking for the year. Oh, that's nice to know. All right, I see so, how it is. So in Jonathan Livingston Seagull, he's talking about... Uh, um, okay, so before I go to that, every book of his has a beginning of a little bit... <laughs> Okay, hold on, I'm gonna do it this way so all of you can see, right? So there's a little bit of a story before the story, right? So it starts with like a little story in there that you read and it's kind of like a prelude to the whole book and then you get the book itself, right? And in the book there's really amazing things. But in Jonathan Levinson Seagull, this part of the story is about a group of sea creatures who were holding very, very tightly to the rocks so that they're not getting, uh, pulled away by the stream. So their entire thing was like, ah, you know, I got like their entire existence is holding on to rocks. Why are you making faces? <laughs> I'm pre I'm like, are you, are you pulling a fast one on me now? Like you- No, the, it's fast and right. decent. So he, they go like, the story goes, there's a stream, there's a river, and in the river there are creatures. And their entire existence from the moment they're born is like you have to hold on very tightly to the rocks so that you're not getting pulled away by the stream. And okay. then one day, one of them goes like, what will happen if I just let go, right? And not fight this stream and just see what happens. 
And everybody around him go like, are you insane? This dream is going to take you and fluff you out all these rocks and you're going to die. Don't do that. And, um, and he goes like, maybe, but maybe this dream knows where it's going and maybe I'll just flow with this dream. And so he, uh, he goes like, I'm just going to let go. And he lets go and the stream shakes him, you know, smashes him on the rocks, but then it lifts him up and now he's floating, like, right, he's going with the stream above all the other creatures who are on the bottom hung, hanging out to the rocks. And, um, yeah. <laughs> just a brief point of clarification. Is the creature's name Jonathan Livingston Seagull? No, no, it's a story no. before Jonathan Livingstone, right? So... Like this, this is the story before that? Yeah, and there's a story the Jesus, same thing. Jesus, we're two here. books before the book we're reviewing at this? What's happening? There's a little bit of a story. Oh, okay, before, that's the little bit. Okay, I got gotcha. you. Before the story. So each one of his books, he has that. Okay. So in Le Jonathan Livingstone, the story is that the, one of the creature lets go, and he is smashed against the rocks, and then he's Then he's held up by above, the river. Right? And then all the little creatures look up, and they see him floating, and they're going like... Messiah, save us! How come you're floating, right? Like, we want to do the same, but this dream is, is, you know, shaking us. And he goes like, I don't teach you anything, let go. And they're like, no, 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 you're the Messiah, you're the savior, you're going to do all that stuff for us. So in Jonathan Levinstone, Seagull, that's the beginning of the stuff, and it's about a seagull who is learning to control the wind and actually become a master pilot, seagull, Pilot? Yes, yeah, okay. Right? All right, so the same thing here. The Messiah concept moves from Jonathan Livingstone to illusions. And in illusions, there's a pilot who is, uh, what do you call those? Uh, those um, the biplanes? Thank you. He's flying biplanes right in the field. And he, uh, he watches another biplane pilot talk to this girl who is afraid of flying and he talks to her and he convinces her that, you know, she's totally fine and she can come on the plane and she can fly. And he goes like, hey, how'd you do that? I want to learn it. And it turns out that that guy was the Messiah. And the Messiah goes around. His name is, you read it, uh, Shemaya, Shemaya something. Uh, and he has his own Messiah book. <laughs> I can't remember the name. Right, got it. So he's it? the Messiah. That's enough. But he's not the same Messiah from the from other the, one. He's but not it's similar, the creature. right? Like the theme continues. It's another right? Messiah. It's another okay. Messiah. And his name is Shimoda, Donald Shimoda, right? And so they're both of them are going around with uh, with their planes and they're flying from field to field. And there are stories. And all of the stories are kind of like all the concepts that we have in our brain right. about how life needs to be, right? Like. Uh, you have to be selfless, you have to help others, you have to X, Y, Z, right? All these problems. And so in the book, he has all these little instructions, which you guys can see, that are coming in and they're part of the Messiah book. And because this is so good, um, later on, they, uh, Richard Bach wrote what the book that the Messiah was holding uh, was, and it's called like Stories of the Messiah, you can buy it as well. But the, these little segments are really, really great, right? So, um, live never to be ashamed if anything you do or say is published around the world, even if what's published is not true. Your friends will know you better in the first minutes you meet them than acquaintances will know you in a thousand years. Uh, the best way to avoid responsibility is to say, I've got responsibilities. So one of, and what's really, really nice at the end of it, he says, uh, everything in this book may be wrong. <laughs> so it's all well, up to you, whatever you choose to that's do. How to, that's <laughs> how to make someone angry. Right? right? It's really that's nice. So one of the things, um, one of the things that, like one of the stories that are super cool about this book is uh, the idea of like movies, right? Like some people love horror movies. Some people like drama, some people like comedies, right? And so when you go to the movie, you choose a movie because you want to experience that emotion that you get from going through the drama or going through the horror or, you know, the comedy or the slapstick. And he's taking uh, this pilot into a movie theater. They choose whatever movie they want. And at the most exciting part, he goes like, hey, why are we here? And the guy's like, shut up and this is the most interesting part and he's like no no no. why are we here he's like shut up you know this is the most interesting part why are you interrupting me and he goes like there's a reason why are we here he's like i love this 
And he goes like, right. So in your life, the, you know, the parts, the, uh, the activities that you choose are the same way that you choose a movie. You enjoy the drama. You enjoy the comedy. You enjoy the simplicity. You enjoy that stuff. And if you don't enjoy it, it's as easy as going to another movie. And uh, it's always, a, for me, it's always a great reminder that like you choose the, um, the interactions that you have in your life based on what makes you feel great. Do you like the drama? Do you like the horror? Do you like the, you know, do you like the quiet? So what would you say this book has really done for you? It made me look at uh, life, right? A little bit less seriously. Yeah. And a lot of that stuff, right? So for example, it goes like, everything you choose, it's a gift. Like every challenge that you have, it's a gift. And you choose the challenges because of the gifts that they have for you. So, you know, like if you look at it, it's kind of like, I can, um, I can choose which movie I watch. And if I watch you watch a drama movie, I don't have to join the movie with you, right? If you love horror movies, I don't have to be part of your horror movies if I don't like horror movies. So it's a nice guide for life in a, in a very simplistic way, uh, I would say, rather than like, hey, let me tell you about the Bible and let me tell you about, you know, ethics. Yeah. So let me tell you about other stuff. Yeah. Uh, Stefan is saying, who's the master, Leroy? Is that from somewhere? <laughs> Steve, that's my buddy. Steve, it's a little, uh, it's a little uh, 80s pop culture reference there. That's he's always the. <laughs> that's. I got you, Pap. I, I know what you mean. I got you. <laughs> okay, well now you have to explain it. Well, that's so you so what Steve is is getting at is this very wisdom based uh messianic teaching, right? The last uh the the last dragon was a eighties mm -hmm. pop culture uh you know uh flip uh flick. Not 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 just uh pop culture, but um cult classic it was like a cult classic and uh there was uh the main character was bruce leroy so he was a african-american who was obsessed with bruce lee and learning martial arts and he wanted to use it to make life better he wanted to become a master mm -hmm. and then he runs up against uh this really mean guy called the shogun who learns all the same skills but only does it to have power mm -hmm. and is is very mean and so, and so there's this clash right between the seeking of knowledge and evolving the self and the, I just want to be powerful and have everyone do what I say. So that's a, it's a, that's a fun, I wouldn't have gone there first like Steve did, but I love that he thought of that. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. So let me give watch you another one. All right. Um, argue for your limitation and sure enough, they're yours. And we've kind of heard that one. I can't remember who said that, uh, say you can say you can't, you're right. Yeah, that? I think that's Henry Ford, right? Whether you think you can or think yeah. you can't, you're probably right. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. Right? And so, like, how many times do we argue for our limitations without even realizing that we're arguing for our limitations? So is a lot of that book those little, like, poem-type things? No, it's a, it's a story between, so what's up? It's a story between the two pilots and questions that are coming up. And then he takes the, he takes the book and opens it up, and whatever quote comes up in the book, they continue a discussion around Oh, it. I see. I see. Um, and he says, what's really cool about this, like he says, you can do that with any book, right? You can find meaning in any story. You can take whatever story. And a lot of people do that with the Bible, right? Like they take the Bible, like today, just open it up and read whatever comes up. And that's yeah. a message from God. Yeah. Right. So you can do it with what, and that's, I think, one of the nice things about this one. There's no, you know, it's like everything might be wrong. I'm not the Messiah. <laughs> right. But here are some ideas for you to consider. Like, you know, like what the uh, caterpillar calls the end of the world, the master calls a butterfly. Right. So right. nuggets like that, that you go like, oh yeah, you know what? Maybe it's not the end of the world, right? And we've seen it now with uh, COVID. Like how many people look at this as a crisis and how many people look at it at like as the beginning? Yeah, yeah, so it's, it's all a great like point. like what happens between, you know, between your ears. And it's a really yeah. fun way to kind of look at it in from different angles. So like one of, one of the stories is uh, talking about selfishness, right? And we're talking about like how when you're, um, you have to be, you know, if someone is in pain, you have to go out and you really have to help them. And so they're sitting around the campfire and, uh, you know, talking and just having some soup and getting warm. And all of a sudden there's like a creature in the woods. 
and uh, excuse me, and then the uh, the Messiah goes like uh, the the pilot goes like, hey, what is that? Why? And the Messiah is like just quiet, and all of a sudden there comes in a hooded figure, and it's skinny and it's shaking and it's like pale white, and he goes like, man, I'm really hurting, really really hurting. I just need you know just a little bit of your blood, and uh, right, and the pilot jumps up and he Was goes that like. All? He goes like, the fuck? No way. And he's like, but I'm really, really hurting. And it's like, if you don't go and give me a little bit, I'm going to die. And he goes like, you're not taking it on my blood. And the creature smiles, looks at the Messiah and goes away. And the Messiah goes like, huh, so that creature was suffering, about to die. If you want, give him a little bit of yourself. And where's your selflessness now? All the stuff that you're supposed to do for people uh, just so they don't hurt, right? It's, it's a little game of... Yeah, I guess my selfishness is not as selfish as I want, you know, I want people to yeah. think. So it's a very interesting concept of like, oh, uh, right and wrong and ethics and all that stuff. Um, Jason Croft. Finally, someone read the book. I love the book so much. I've read most of his books. Me too. Yeah. That's cool. I'm Did you know that he... world. I'm, that... I'm checking him out on Wikipedia now. Did you know that he wrote a sequel eventually? Yeah. Uh, and that was the, uh, what was it called? Uh, it's called The Adventures of a Reluctant... It's called Illusions 2, The Adventures of a Reluctant Student. And he didn't write it until 2014. Okay, I did not know that. Long time later. Yeah, very long time later. He so also actually was a pilot and flew planes. And um, he got in a crash with or a landing accident. And, and got hurt, but apparently he's still alive. He also sold the rights and they made Jonathan Livingston Seagull into a movie with That's a awesome. soundtrack by Neil Diamond. Yeah, and you know what? Sadly, and Jason, he says the right thing. Yeah, the sequel sucks and the movie oh, sucks. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> That's so sad. Isn't that the worst when you love a book yeah. and then the sequel comes out and you're all excited? And it's, yeah, it's for me, that was... um. The Celestine Prophecy. When yes, I was, I was when trying I was to remember college, what it was. Totally. When I was in college, I loved the Celestine yeah. Prophecy so much, and then they came out with the sequel, and it yeah. was just dog shit. Yeah. And I was like, yeah. I was like crushed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, Jason says they did go need go Neil Diamond though. Yeah, I like Neil. That's Diamond. right. Yeah, it's really cool. Um, yeah. So, and the Celestine Prophecy. There's a book before that, even right? There's a because that's also a series. I read that and there's like four books in that series, I believe. Yeah, I think um, yeah. I can look it up, but I almost felt like the, 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 they made a prequel. I don't know if there actually was a book. It's a good question. See, now, I'm we're, look getting, it up. now we're getting geeky. <laughs> Finally, there's a book that both Paul and I have read. <laughs> that one, that's, that was, yeah, I love that book. I love that book. That book actually made me think about living my life in a different way you know that's where we i think you know a book one. is 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 pretty cool but let's see and then they wrote uh the one who wrote right it was the same thing uh was it john morris the uh, what's that i think he wrote the one he got uh, married right he was talking about the uh uh, so we ended up doing three there's not a book before if i but he did three sequels he did the 10th insight the yeah, secret of shambhala in search of the 11th insight yeah. and then the 12th insight and i and you know once i read the 10th and i was not impressed i didn't even follow i didn't even know he read, wrote those other plus the other thing that was a huge disappointment they made a movie why then it sucked too and it sucked too <laughs> yeah it was terrible yeah it was, it was. Awful. it was all this religion stuff yeah Terrible. yeah that's true that was a really good book i really like that and there was another one where he was writing about relationships and then uh the one about his wife and then they got divorced and everybody got like so upset like why are you getting divorced you just wrote the book the one about the perfect marriage and he's like come on i'm you man but the, the fans were like not having it. <laughs> <laughs> That's the best. That's I don't remember the best. what that was. But yeah, so um, if you guys want, this is like a one day, you know, super skinny, really nice 
book uh, to read. I love the stories at the beginning. Maybe we'll talk about Jonathan Livingstone too. Uh, what's cool about this story, right? It's like this guy comes in uh, to a mass of people, right? And uh, a master comes to the earth, right? And he's learning all the way of the world. He's a mechanic. And he's learning all the ways of the world. And then people start to come to him and they go like, oh, wow, you're the master. You should heal us, right? Like, you should tell us what to do. And he goes like, you guys know how to do it. And they're like, no, 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 no. You're the master, <laughs> right? And he goes like, no, you have the power to heal yourself. So they're like, no, you heal us. And isn't that kind of like so many people of, I don't want to learn. I don't want to become the master. You tell me what to do and I'll do it. And then I'll do right. it, you know, to the limits of what I feel comfortable doing. Right. <laughs> And so in here, the master just goes at wakes up one day, goes like, you know what? Not interested anymore. Leaves his tools and just walks away. And he leaves the whole crowd going like, uh, <laughs> what? Yeah. Here's the master. And he said on to them, if a man told God that he wanted, that what he wanted most, this is really good. Okay, hold on. If a man told God that he wanted most of all to help the suffering of the world, no matter the price to himself, and God answered and told him what he, what he must do. Should the man do it? Should he do it as he's told? And the crowd said, of course, master, it should be a pleasure for him to suffer the tortures of hell itself, should God ask for it. No matter what those tortures, nor how difficult the task, honor to be hanged, glory to be nailed to the tree and burned, if so be that God has asked, they said. And what would you do, the master said unto the multitude, if God spoke directly to you, to your face and said, I command that you be happy in this world as long as you live, what would you say then? And the multitude was silent. <laughs> not a voice, not a sound was heard upon the hillsides across the valleys where they stood. And the master said unto the silence, in the path for your happiness shall we find the learning for which we have chosen this lifetime. So it is that I have learned today and chose to leave you now and walk your path and find your peace. And isn't it funny that most of us, if someone says like, suffer, sure, I'll suffer. But if they oh. say, be happy, what? <laughs> and so that's what I like, right? I was like, okay, that is your, if God came to you and said, Paul, you have to be happy. That's your task. But that's not the big, the, the big story that so many, not all of us, but so many were raised under, right? is that the Messiah suffered. Yeah. And so therefore, for all of the people of Christian faith, there's from the moment you can be told stories, right? It's, it's, it's taught that, you know, suffering out of love for others is an important value to have. And so it's, there's a lot of that. That's like that. I think I've said before, I was, I heard someone once was giving a presentation and she said, you ever notice all the statues <laughs> that, right. and all the statues that honor people are made for people who suffered. They're never made for people who, like did really well easily in life. Right. <laughs> it's not right. like, it's like right. here was Kevin and he rocked it with very little effort. We made him a statue. <laughs> you know, like no one ever does that. <laughs> and you know what? This isn't funny. Like, I think that was one of the things that you said to me, like the hustle that Gary Vaynerchuk always preaches and how, you know, so much like, hey, go for the hustle, wake up at two in the morning, do all these things. And Where he changed that eventually. He got did. enough pushback from people that he changed it. And, and I always wondered, like, did he change it because he was tired of the pushback or did he, you know, like, you never know, you know, like, but he did finally change it. He said to people, what I'm saying is if you're, if you're not willing to do all that and you're going to complain about your life, don't talk to me. He sort of amended it. Um, yeah. And now if you notice, he's only talking about happiness, right? Like, don't you want to be happy? Yeah. It's all about happiness. So yeah. I, I, <coughs> I like the notion that we don't have to suffer that life is not about the original scene that you know right. we can just be happy and you don't have to you know be a martyr for other people's pleasures right like uh abraham hicks i think says there's not enough ways that you can stand on, on your head to make someone else happy so yeah yeah you can't you can't get sick enough to make other people right. healthy exactly. you can't get poor enough to make other people rich yeah yeah yeah, yeah. so what do you think it takes to get people to really embrace that though to like to get people to really let go of the notion that they have to endure a whole bunch of suffering and just be happy what do you think it takes to make that happen i think people use that as a tool you know as a tool for attention or a tool for feeling good about themselves 
Like, look how much I'm giving. I'm a good person because I am suffering, right? Like that's oh, the like kind of badge of, of honor type stuff. Yeah, that's my you know my self definition of like I'm a good person because yeah. you know I suffer. But I think like once you realize it's what we talked about yesterday with uh, Brian, right? Where um, why would you be a good person if you don't believe in heaven? <laughs> right. Like that same thing, right? Right. Oh. <laughs> Yeah, just be, you know, just be. And I think it's also kind of like the upraising, you know, when like if you guilt your kids of like, oh, my God, look what you've done to me with your behavior. Now it's about like, what am I doing to other people? Other people are suffering because of me. I'm not a good person, you know, Yeah. You know, stuff. So there's a lot of uh, unlearning that needs to happen. And maybe you just get to a point where you're like, OK, enough is enough. It's time for me for, to to be me and enjoy me. I don't know. Right. Yeah. All right. Hi. Well, good book, Ifat. I get it. it. I get why you like it. Probably not going to read it, but maybe I will. You never know. And you know what? Maybe if you comment, you'll be in the will of well <laughs> names, and I can you win a book. <laughs> um, maybe you win a book and you get one cent to you. <laughs> we're almost out of time. So tomorrow's Friday wrap up, right? Friday. We got anything else we need to let people know about? No, we'll no, be here good, at the same right? time, five p.m., six p.m. Eastern. Uh, tomorrow, so not our usual time. We will see you tomorrow at this evening. And let us know, do you like the evening better or do you like the midday better? Actually, I would be very curious to know which one do you guys enjoy better. So bring your wine tomorrow, bring your coffee, bring your dinner. And, tomorrow, uh, Friday, Friday, I might bring my, we might make it the, the wrap up with wine. We might, I might do it. The WW of Friday. Happy hour. <laughs> little, little, little late happy hour action. Sure. Well, well, toast virtually. Virtually All toast. Right. Okay. We'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Hey, if you enjoyed today's episode, come back and spend more time with us. You could be on the broadcast sharing your thoughts. We hang out live Monday through Friday at 2 p.m. Eastern at www.bethenakedtruth.com slash live.